Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's Mike here at Gabe from Scratch, and Microsoft just wound up their Visual Studio 2019 launch keynotes. And what we're going to do today is look at a very condensed version of it. Just like I did a couple of weeks ago at GDC for the major keynotes, I'm going to summarize it in as short a period as possible. There was a lot of PR speak or behind the scenes stuff there that if you're just interested in what's new, you probably weren't too interested in at all. So we're going to show you the key new features that were added to Visual Studio 2019 and nothing else. But if you're interested, Visual Studio is available for download right now. Head on over to visualstudio.microsoft.com forward slash downloads. The community, the professional, and enterprise versions are all available for download. Now, once again, if you're unaware of this, the community version is completely free as long as you make less than a million dollars a year. So for most people, you can just download the full version now and have at it. Now, the nice thing is some of the downloads are a little bit more streamlined. It didn't take me that long to get it. Uh, it's a very clean process now to install Visual Studio and the more importantly, to uninstall Visual Studio. So since Visual Studio 2017, it isn't such a pig like it used to be in the past. All right, so without further ado, let us go ahead and look at what happened during the keynote. Now the key parts of the keynote, pun not intended, started around the uh, 15 minute mark and they started actually demonstrating what is new in Visual Studio. And the nice thing that they've done is they've, they've optimized the startup speed. So now they've got a modal window that launches at start for creating uh, your projects, for cloning from code. You can actually post in a, a URL from GitHub and it'll automatically clone that repository. Or you can clone, um, just log directly into GitHub and pull down your projects that way. So this will give you a faster launch experience, which is definitely nice. Um, after that, they've got a new create... Um, project window, you can search based on view. So what they've done is they've got rid of the drill down way that you used to do things to like a kind of a, a daunting process of picking what kind of project to create. Now it is filter based and there are a number of different platforms supported there. Uh, they've also got pinning on the left hand side of the most uh, recent or uh, commonly created projects. You can pin your favorites. So in, in both this window and the original window. So if you're using the same projects over and over and over again, it's not just chronological. You can pin your favorites now, which is nice. Uh, and then once again, GitHub and Azure Op are baked directly in here. Um, then we've got uh, Visual Studio Live Share was demonstrated. Now this is actually pretty cool. This is for you to be able to collaborate with a remote developer. And the way it works is you connect to their desktop session and that session sends everything back to you. In the example they showed here, they actually connect to a Visual Studio Code um, session from Visual Studio 2019. And then what it does is basically it takes the full configuration of the remote machine and sends the data back. So if you don't have uh, the same setup that the remote machine has, no biggie. Also, when you debug, you're actually debugging on the instance on the remote machine. Machine. On top of that, they've also got um, that you can uh, add in de uh, debug and breakpoints on the remote machine, and it's actually running on that machine, not on your own. You can also see the other user, what they're doing, where they are in the cursor, and so on. Definitely a very cool thing here. You can actually even work across platforms. So a Windows machine can connect to a Mac machine running either Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code. And again, the most important thing is all of the logic comes from the remote machine. So if it has plugins or extensions installed, those are going to be available to the remote user, even if they haven't installed them. And IntelliSense is fully shared across machines. And now speaking of IntelliSense, next time we moved on to IntelliCode, which was demoed. Now IntelliCode is their AI assisted version of IntelliSense. Basically what they did is they uh, use machine learning on GitHub repositories to, to, to discover best practices and most common uses. And what it does is basically it makes its suggestions based off of those. And now instead of being, you know, just a simple alphabetic order when you're doing things um, for IntelliSense, it's actually giving you the most common one. So you're going to be able to do a lot of fill in the blanks coding here as long as it matches. Now, sometimes it's not going to match because your coding experience is going to be different than the remote one. Well, one other thing that was added here in IntelliCode is that you can now create your own local logic or rules that it will apply. So you can mix and match between the global best practices or your local version, which you can share with your team and then kind of build your own local smart AI version of source code. So it learns your way of coding and gives you the, uh, the suggestions based off of that, which is definitely a nice improvement there. Now, in terms of what language support um, IntelliCode right now, in Visual Studio 2019, it supports uh, C++, uh, XAML and C Sharp, whereas Visual Studio Code supports all of those as well as TypeScript, JavaScript, Python, and Java. Uh, next up, they showed, uh, oh yeah, this one wasn't really shown, but you can go to launch.visualstudio.com uh, and there's a bunch of training materials available for Visual Studio 2019 right there. They didn't showcase it, but they did mention it. 
<clears throat> excuse me. Now, the next big thing they did show, however, was uh, data breakpoints are coming to C Sharp. And now, this is one of the features I've been jealous of C++ developers over when I work with C Sharp. And what it allows you to do is basically set a breakpoint based off a of data value changing. And it allows you to debug very complex systems in a much simpler way. So instead of having to jump through code until you get to a data of a certain value, you can just basically say, uh, if this value in memory changes, hit a breakpoint. And it really is a huge time saver. So it's nice to see that that's coming to C Sharp developers. Uh, so where were we? Okay, so after that we've got, uh, oh, they also demonstrated using the Gears of War 4 source code base that debugging uh, the amount of memory used is way, way lower. Uh, we get into live unit testing, so automatically reruns unit tests when code changes and the feedback is shown directly in the editor. Um, Visual Studio also now recognizes Unicode characters, so they had emojis directly inside of a string. Uh, makes it a lot easier to work with Unicode, especially for, uh, again, static or constant strings in your code. Uh, there's also a new option for wrapping your parameters for uh, code folding. Um, we get a new coloring system in Visual Studio that mimics the way that Visual Studio code currently works. Basically, there's more context with how it works. They've also demonstrated a new ability to automatically switch between a for each statement and a linked version of it. So if you're not really that great with link, but you want to linkify your code, there are now tools in for automatically converting between the two. There's also new improved tools for uh, code cleanup, including you can export your settings to an editor.config file uh, that lives within the code repository, and then code cleanup can run you using those refactoring settings for all of your code going forward. Uh, Visual, Studio for 2019, Visual Studio 2019 for Mac has the same IntelliSense code refactoring and highlighting code that we saw in Visual Studio. It's actually built on the same Roslyn-based code. Uh, so those will now improve at the same rate as well, and you will get superior IntelliSense code refactoring, etc. in Visual Studio for Mac. Also on the front of um, Xamarin. So IntelliCode is supported in Xamarin. Uh, there's also now a properties panel for configuring XAML properties without having to go into the code uh, makes configuring your XAML uh, items so much easier now. So if you want to set like the background color or shadowing or bordering or whatever, there is now a new property windows makes that a whole lot easier to work with. They also said that they improved the whole developer loop in general. So Xamarin install is smaller. The uh, build process and deployment process are faster and the Android emulator supports Hyper-V. So should run faster if your version supports that. Coincidentally, you do need Windows 10 Pro versions to have Hyper-V support. Um, and then finally, they had new details on publishing to Azure. Uh, you can uh, now, when you create an Azure product, you can have it automatically go to certified sources such as Azure in the cloud. And you've also got um, more advanced configuration. You can configure uh, SQL Server or SQL Data Storage, etc., or um, Azure Data Storage directly in Visual Studio. And one of the cool new features is you can actually come directly back into the initial settings point at any point in time and configure uh, additional properties. And that was all they showed. Now, one thing that you may be noticing is if you are a C++ developer, there was not one mention of C++ in this entire thing. Now there are new features and functions and such going on all day long. They are doing additional details of what is new in Visual Studio and this is by no means a comprehensive list. This is just the items they chose to highlight during their keynote. So I know there's vast improvements to the uh, search functionality, for example, and they never cut, touched on any of that stuff. Uh, but this is the highlight features they showcased. And again, uh, strangely enough, I didn't hear anything new for C++ in there. And I think that some people are going to find that a bit disappointing. But on the whole, Visual Studio is definitely looking uh, like a much more lightweight product. It looks like it's going to integrate much nicer into across the entire family between Visual Studio, uh, between uh, Visual Studio Code, and then of course Visual Studio for Mac. It looks like they're sharing more and more code, sharing more and more um, connectivity between them. And I got to say that live share stuff looked really, really sweet. But I got to say uh, data breakpoints for Visual Studio or Visual C++, of oh, that, I can't speak today. Uh, C Sharp is definitely the one that I like the most. What about you? Is there a feature here that really stood out? Or are you on the whole kind of disappointed? Anyways, that is the uh, Microsoft Visual Studio 2019 keynote in less than 10 minutes. Uh, they are going to be hosting the entire full blown version after the fact online. So if you want to see the full thing, uh, you can. But I have to say, other than the bits I've covered here, it was kind of long. All right, that's it. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.